it's a hole in the ground. But what did you expect from a place called a pit? This is, however, a very special hole in the ground. It is from this one site that we have gained more information about EOC mammals than from any other site anywhere else in the world. Today, it's the Messel Pit. Now, the Messel Pit is the remains of a shallow volcano called a Mar Volcano. Now, a Mar Volcano forms when groundwater comes in contact with magma, triggering the explosion. Now, in the case of the Messel Pit, this occurred almost 50 million years ago as the Alps began to rise up and formed an area in Germany called the Upper Rhine Graben. The pit formed as the Alps were forming about 50 million years ago and after the initial volcanic explosion a lake filled the depression and it is into this lake that the sediments deposited as well along with the fossil animals that make Messel so famous. Now if you take a look at this cross section of the pit, you can see that the outline of the crater and the various layers of sediment. The pit sits in predominantly carboniferous plutonic rock from about 320 million years ago. Now at the base of the pit is a plug of volcanic rock with a layer of tuff on top of that from the initial eruption. Now after this layer of sandstone and conglomerate is on top of that and then we've got the all-important oil shells at the very top which is where the fossils are found and the fossils that come out of the Messel pit are absolutely stunning the fineness of the oil shell uh, combined with the anoxic environment at the base of the lake has preserved the animal and plants from the year surrounding tropical rainforest in exquisite detail we've got soft body parts such as fur and wings of insects and wings of bats along with even stomach contents of some of these animals there. and it is because of the quality of these fossils that Messel has become so famous and because the lake stayed relatively stable for about two, th two to three million years we've been able to get a lot of information about the ecosystem of the Eocene We've got examples of plant material, we've got insects, birds, fish that swam in the lake, amphibians, alligators, and perhaps most famously, the mammal species. They found animals such as Propaleotherium, which was an ancient horse ancestor. They found bats such as Paleochiropteryx with the exquisite fur and wing membranes being able to be seen. You've got creatures like Macrocranian, which is actually a large hedgehog, just missing the spines and having spiky fur instead. It's the typical spines of the hedgehog having not developed yet. Goths, we've got the remains of rodents, such as Aliaruvus. And perhaps most importantly for us, we've also got the remains of ancient primates such as the famous Darwinius. Now, there are orders of mammals whose fossils have been found in the Messel Pit that are no longer with us, they're completely extinct, such as the beautifully named Leptictidium, which was part of a clade of mammals called the Leptictidia. Now, they were an early group of Eutherian mammals who walked on their hind legs. They were omnivorous and grew up to about 90 centimeters long and superficially re resembled something like an elephant shrew today. Another example would be a creature like Capidodon, which is an actually an arboreal animal, a really large one that grew over a metre long. Capidodon is part of a group of non-placental eutherian mammals called the Simolester, and they bear a superficial resemblance to opossums or a humongous squirrel but they're not related to either the very very early eutherian mammals before placentas had evolved so what killed all these animals well besides the regular accidental deaths that often happen within the animal kingdom and the animals floating down into the base of the lake and being preserved 
it's thought that a lot of the animals died in a series of events called outgassing. Now, there was a similar disaster in a place in Cameroon, Cameroon called Lake Nyos in 1986, where in a similar situation you've got a volcanic lake, carbon dioxide gas builds up at the base of the lake, and then at some point the water can no longer contain the gas pressure as it builds up, and you end up with a CO2 eruption. And the gas explodes out of the lake and then covers the nearby landscape in a thick cloud of CO2, which kills a lot of most of the animal life that live on the forest floor. It's thought that a series of these events are at least partially responsible for the wide collection of fossil animals that we get out of the nestle pit. Now as a side note for the fossils of the nestle pit, they helped indirectly in the development of a new preservation technique. That's because the oil shell that the fossils are preserved in is very, very brittle when it dries out. It naturally has quite a high water content. So as it dries out, the, the rock literally just crumbles to dust. And there's a good chance that the fossils will be destroyed in the process. So in order to protect them, both first amateur and then professional paleontologists developed a process called the transfer technique where they embed the fossil in a plastic, usually epoxy resin as they remove the fragile rock from around them. The fossils were first found in 1876 when the Messel Pit was a open cast mine where they were extracting the oil shell and in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, about 40% of Germany's oil production came from the pit itself. Now, oil production ceased in 1962, and for a time the site was considered for use as a landfill. Now, thankfully, the local residents protested this, and the land was eventually bought by the state of Hesse, and was declared a protected site. Then in 1995, it was added to UNESCO's World Heritage List specifically for, for its fossils, making it one of the very few sites in UNESCO that is designated purely for geological purposes and fulfills criteria number eight on the UNESCO's World Heritage List. Now, if you do plan on visiting Messel, it's about 35 kilometers south of Frankfurt, and I would also recommend not just going to the pit itself and the UNESCO World Heritage Centre uh, associated with it, but also go to the village of Messel itself as they've got a fantastic um, museum in the village itself displaying some more of the fossils. However, be prepared to translate most of the information out of German because there, when I went there was no English translations there for, for everything. <laughs> 